Hi everyone and welcome back to your weekly installment of the Reserve List Top 10. These are the hottest selling cards on the Reserve List this week from October 26th to November 2nd of 2024. And you'll notice a lot of prepping going on in the Reserve List this week. And that means we have a lot more to talk about than just the cards that are selling. So stay tuned, we have a lot to cover. Hey everyone and welcome back, MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me for Reserve List Top 10. Buckle up, Buttercup. We're going to have some fun this week. Now, a reminder, if you enjoyed today's content and you want to support my channel, well, of course, you can like and subscribe. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. More subscribers is always a good thing, but you can also use my TCG Player affiliate link. It's found in the description of my videos. You buy there, we get a kickback if you use the link. Now, let's go to number 10. Now, number 10 on the list this week is Scorched Ruins from Weatherlight. This card comes in with an average price of $59.99, and the 21 sales this week represent a total value of $1,259.79 if they were all near mint. Now, in this case, they are not all near mint. The cards selling right now are heavily played and moderately played cards. You got to take off between 20 and 30% off the price tag we're seeing at that 59 because this card is still seeing a lot of play. We have a lot of players desiring this card, but they don't want to pay top dollar. And now that the interest is kind of turned away from some of these crazy Eldrazian things we've seen, at least temporarily until Foundations comes out, that this allows for a little bit of breathing space for players who want to get the card before the next wave of insanity comes with some of these reserve list sales, not to mention people just trying to save money. Now, when we take a look at our next card, this has not been here forever. There's been no sales action at all. This is Escaped Shapeshifter. Now, when we take a look at this card, it is a five casting cost, three other creature. It costs a dollar two roughly to buy this card to a dollar twenty. You can find them for eighty cents on TCG Player. It's not an expensive card. I mean, the total sales here twenty three is twenty seven dollars and sixty cents. It's it's a hiccup. So what are we talking about? Well, for that five casting cost, the two blue and three other, you do get a shapeshifter that says. As long as your opponent controls any creatures with flying, Escape Shapeshifter has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Trample, and Protection from any color. So really, it can offer a little bit of a, of a little bit. It offers a little bit of a smatten of stuff, but I'm not quite sure why it's selling so many copies, other than maybe some potential upswing with later created cards. But either way, it's a really low volume card, but it hasn't sold in a long time, so there you have it. Now, for our number eight card this week, this is Tithe, and this comes to us from Visions. This card has lost a lot of value since the 2021-2022 buyouts. You can find it here now for around $22.36 on average. Most copies even moderately played, though, hold about $18 of price. So this one doesn't shift a lot on the low end. Between near mint, moderately played, lightly played, it only has a buck or two difference. So that means the value of this card is there. So what are we getting? Well, for a one casting cost, let's not forget get one and this thing is an instant that says search your library for a planes card if you control fewer lands than target opponent you may search your library for an additional planes card and show them to people and then put them into your hand that means you can thin out your deck technically by two if you play this card correctly now that's kind of a good ability to have around it's a great card and really for 20 bucks it is a good deal i already have a play set of four i don't need more but for a lot of players out there who don't realize this card exists there might be a, a time and a place to buy a card like this and it could be now for you so take a look but the good news is it doesn't spike in value either now for our next card we're jumping into number seven this is volroth stronghold this card comes in with an average price of $86.73, and it had 30 sales this week, and that's kind of an uptick, and I think we're still following on the demon decks and stuff for Commander that we've been seeing going around, because this thing does something that a lot of players like, and that's bring things back from your graveyard. Now, this comes in with $2,601.90 of total sales action, if they're all near mint, but yet again, I have to add the caveat that the cards selling are not near mint. Now, what does this card do? It's a legendary land that can tap for colorless. That's right, boys and girls. It doesn't come into play tapped. You can pay one black and one other to put a target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. You can bring back the big bad boys of comedy. You can do crazy things with this card, and it's all for less than 100 bucks. Now, this card used to be a lot more expensive, and the fact it's this cheap and you can find heavily played copies for less than 50 bucks means you've got to be shopping around for a card like this. But once you own at least one, you never have to worry about it because you own a copy. 
copy and any build you want to have at least you have the available option of using it now our next card is thrall champion it is one of the cards i love to buy on this channel it's from fallen empires and what's going on? 36 sales, which is only $81. You'll notice the couple of cards I've showed you, um, the, the Escape Shapeshifter, super cheap card. You've got the Thrall Champion, super cheap card. These are not expensive, two bucks, a dollar. Somebody's just having some fun speculating on future endeavors with these cards. Now, what are we getting with a Thrall Champion? There is some upside to this card that players forget. It's one black and four other. You can be splashed into a lot of stuff. All thralls get plus one, plus one, which means all shapeshifters and all changelings get plus one, plus one. You can also tap this to take control of a target thrall, which is the same as saying I can take control of a shapeshifter or a changeling. It's kind of a neat ability. Now, if thrall champion loses, loses out of play, though, if you get rid of it somehow, you lose control of all the great stuff you own. But that's okay, because this thing doesn't lose them if it untaps. A good card for less than three bucks. Now, for our next card, we're going to dive into Rashida Scales Bay. Now, of course, we got to talk about these cards, and we'll be talking about this a bit more in the wrap-up. 40 sales this week, which is $54. This is speculation on this card because it offers something that people forget about. It is a 2-white, 3-other, three 3-4. Three Definitely not a powerhouse by today's standards in any stretch of the imagination. So why would somebody be diving into a card like this? Let's take a closer look. Now, when we look at Rashida Scales Bay, we can see that this card, yes, it's a legend, but it also has buried target attacking or blocking dragon. Gain an amount of life equal to that dragon's power. And of course, we're going back to Tarkir. And when we go back there, dragons are going to be a big thing. And it's people speculating on this card. I did mention it because it's less than a dollar to buy a copy of this card. It's not expensive. And if this card's going to spike up in value for any reason, it is a card to pay attention to. Buy now, buy early. Do a little prep work. Now our next card. This is Didgeridoo, and it's coming to us from Homelands. Now Didgeridoo actually had 43 sales this week, which is $698.75 of sales action. Now the upside potential of Didgeridoo is something players should not overlook, and that looks like what's actually happening here is players are taking advantage of a card that's less than $20, but offers a massive upside if anything ever goes its way. It's a one casting cost artifact that states you pay three and you can take a Minotaur from your hand and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned. That means you can do it like a flash ability. You can do this on their turn, your turn. You can bring this in as a blocker. And there's enough Minotaurs out there to make it kind of disgustingly powerful. But it's only going to get better as the years go by until finally we get some true tribal abilities. And this card goes to $100 plus. This is one of the cards I'm always keeping an eye on. And when it always falls below the $8 mark, I make sure I grab a couple of copies. Oh, Final Fantasy has the Griffins going wild. This is Griffin Canyon from Visions. This card is still seeing tremendous sales, coming in with 80 sales this week at an average price now of $12.80. Now, players may not realize this, this card was 5 bucks less than a month ago. This card's over doubled in value, and it does lend itself to that, that manipulation that can happen so easily on the reserve list with a few ducats in your pocket. You put a few shekels out there, and you have no, no compunctions about doing it. It's pretty easy to manipulate the market. We'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Now, this card taps for colorless mana, but it can also untap a target griffin, and it gets plus one, plus one, which means it can untap shapeshifters and changelings, just like we talked about earlier. This card's a lot more powerful than people can realize, but if Final Fantasy gives us more griffins, then we're going to see even more crazier things going on, and maybe this card will act actually have some sticking power and we'll talk about that now our next card again going back to dragons and tarkir here is hivis of the scale this card doubled in value this week to four dollars and 63 cents it was two dollars last week i think the last month it was a dollar something i actually picked up some copies for the channel a little over a month ago and i did mention this card is something to always keep an eye on it has 146 sales this week or 675 dollars and 98 cents of total sales action now what is this card what, what are we talking about well as a five casting cost, it's pretty mediocre, even bad by some, you know, by today's standards. It is a legend, it's a 3-4. You can choose not to untap it, but it says gain control of target dragon. If Hivis of the Scale becomes untapped, or you lose control of Hivis of the Scale, lose control of that dragon. Now, again, we could say, yes, it can take over changelings and stuff, but if they're playing dragons and use this with City of Shadows and stuff, you can pick off their dragons and nuke them to your own City of Shadows, which removes them from the game. There are other reserveless cards you can manipulate with this to really make an impact in what you're trying to create, as well as have a good offensive card as needed. 
Now for our next card and the number one card of the day, here is Zerolin of the Claw. This card is up to $10.89 on average, and you're going to see a spike on Monday or Tuesday when MTG stocks actually catches up because this thing had 209 sales, which averages out to $2,276.01. But again, I'm giving you that little extra to say they're not near mint copies selling. These are heavily played, moderately played, lightly played, and near mint. This again is a five casting cost, bad boy dragon guy. He's actually just like a Vishivan guy, but it's still cool. Um, Summon a legend that says, search your library for a dragon card and put it into play as though it were just played. Shuffle through your library afterwards. That creature is unaffected by summoning sickness, remove it from the game after. Well, all those ancient dragons are just brutal, which means if you can find a way to get this guy into the battlefield quick, and you manage to get that three mana going, you can haul out some very big dragons and you can smack people. And some of these dragons have such massive side effects that are upsided, it's just crazy. Now let's take a moment and talk about three cards in today's video. I'm not sure what's going on with the shapeshifter. I will keep an eye on that, other than maybe some people speculating on shapeshifters and changelings. I'm not quite sure. It has kind of a fun ability, but it costs a little bit too much to get into a regular game, and the upside's very small. So I'm going to have to look into that. I think somebody's just having fun. But let's talk for a second about Rashida Scalesbane, Hivis of the Scale, Zerolin of the Claw. Now, each of these cards I have mentioned in the last couple of months. Dragons of Tarkir is coming, and the idea that this set is coming down the pipeline. You would think players would be preparing, and some players are. They are prepping up. And that's a very smart play. Because what's the downside? You own a reserve list card that you bought for a buck or two. That's the downside. It's not usable right now. That's the lowest of the low. It's way down there on the floor. It's not that far away, is it? What's the upside? What happens if we get some crazy uh, card that goes off with Rashida and makes her like an indispensable defense card against some massive dragon tribal. And she goes to 10, 12, 15 bucks. You 15 X your money. But the low side, she was 80 cents. The upside, she goes back up to like 15 bucks. Players prepping is something I don't think enough players think about. You're not prepping because you have to have that card to play with. You're prepping in case you need that card and you're offsetting the chance that it goes up against you and costs too much money later to justify buying it. The same for Zero of the Claw. That card's been 40, 50 bucks. When it was down at five, six, seven dollars the last month, and I'd mentioned a video, eh, I paid a lot more than that when I bought mine. You might want to pick one up. I have a couple. Mini Mox has got his. I've got a couple for um, for my own deck I was building, and one or two I think are still inside my Patreon box for my patrons, but. I still bought a couple because they were so cheap to buy. I was prepping against that eventuality because it's going to happen. The question is when. Then you look at Hivis of the Scale. Again, it's a five casting cost, sure, but it was 80 cents, 75 cents. And I noticed some sales happening. And it's something I need to mention to you guys because that prepping time will save you money. It saves you time and it saves you effort later. These are popular types of, of themes in Magic being dragons. And there are two, two things to talk about here. The downside risk is so low, it's basically on the floor, and your feet are already there, so you're not going to fall. No money is lost when it's a dollar or two. You wouldn't even spend that on a coffee. It's so cheap. The upside, though, is if this card goes to, I don't know, $10, 12 $13, let's just say, you get a 30 40% return on something like Zero of the Claw, but it's been as high as 50 dollars so the upside could technically be as high as that if we get some crazy dragons or something that just makes dragons go off the wall and we've seen it before so we will see it again at some point if wizards wants to tap that button and say want to see something funny boys and girls and they click it so when people are prepping up for that they're buying the cards of five six seven eight dollars if they buy one then it's just a player who wants to know to copy they're prepping for the future but speculators buy 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 copies because they know if something goes off, they get to sell them at 20, 30 dollars. They only have to sell six or seven to pay for the entire allotment that they bought. They buy 40. They only need to sell eight to pay for everything. And the rest is pure profit whenever they actually get around to selling them or if some player buys into the foam and buys it right away. That's insane, but that's how it works. It doesn't matter if you like it. It's just one of those things we have to face off against. 
I'm doing things here personally to mute those chances for the members of my channel, but that's not what everyone's going to do. They get caught up with looking at things like foundations. Then we're going to jump over and we're going to look at uh, uh, the new Innistrad remastered. And that will take away your attention span. It lowers your peripherals to a narrow view of what's coming in front of you, but not what you should be looking at at the sides. Or you can't see my hands right now. That's where you should be looking. Because buying one of those cards for a dollar or two and just getting that whole allotment of cards, it's going to save you a lot of time and effort later because you're going to own them and you never have to worry about it again. And if you want to play those themes, they're already in your Rolodex of cards. And since they're reserve list and you bought them so cheap, you're talking you could have bought all these cards last month for about $9. That'd be moderately played to lightly played. $9, you got at all the cards I'm talking about. I mean, even right now, if we bought Hiv as the Scale for three bucks, we bought Rashida for 80 cents, and you bought Zerlin for like $9. Still pretty cheap, right? That's what I'm talking about. But if these cards go off or anything makes them just go, you may see these cards at 15x that price, like Seeds of Innocence. We saw that this year. Um, and we've seen a few others go off at the same time, haven't we? Sold Devi Digger early when Doctor Who came out. That card went from a dollar to 15. Somebody made a killing on that stat. Fast Bond. How many times did that go up this year? People made a killing on that card. They trade up into power doing that. So it's not if it can happen. When it will happen is the question. So if you're one of those people who watches my videos, hopefully you get a little bit out of this. Hopefully. You can lead that horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And you have to believe in what I'm saying. And I'm just one person out there giving you an opinion on what I think is going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't say it. I'm looking at past tense history to build something to say it's happened before. Here are the things. We've seen it in these circumstances. So chances are it's going to happen again. And the sales kind of bear out to that. And you don't want to be caught at the end of the line saying, oh, please, can I have one? Oh, it's like gone up 500%. Oh, I still want one though. Get it when it's cheap. And remember, there'll still be periods where it dies down before this stuff comes out. All right, guys, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for being here on the channel. I hope you guys had a great time. And I will see you guys oh, at the live stream tonight, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, and some fun videos later. Guys, have a great one. Hey, guys, a big shout out and thank you to my fantastic patrons. Because of the patrons you see right now on the board, daily uploaded content happens each and every day. Without them, we wouldn't be doing the content we do, so I've always got to take that moment to recognize the people that make it happen. Whether you're one of my supporters on YouTube or one of my actual hardcore patrons, it's because of those people that it happens each and every day. So thanks again for being supporters of my channel, because guys, without you, there's nothing. Thanks again. Okay, ramble jamble. We're here. Don't forget about Griffin Canyon. That thing has spiked up a lot. Remember when it was like a $5 card? Yeah, look where we're at now. Um, if Final Fantasy gives us any decent Griffins, it won't matter that it's kind of an okay reserve list card. People are just going to freak out because it'll fit together. People love doing those themes. Do I think it's a good time to buy Griffin Canyon? No. No, I don't. You got to wait now for the hype to die down. Stay away. Stay away from cards that are spiking like that. You've missed it for the moment. Not forever, but for the moment. Now, if you want to pay attention to a good card here at the Ramble Jamble, cards you should be paying attention to are as follows. And I'm only telling you guys because you made it to the end. I'll have another video on this, but let's just let's just touch base on this. You should be looking at cards like Damping Field, Seeds of Innocence, okay, Winding Canyons. A lot of these cards have dipped down to historic lows, and there's a little more going on than people realize when you build the right deck. So just have some fun with it. Enjoy. Think about the cards that were a lot higher, mind over matter, that have really come down in price. There's a lot of deals out there. Now, again, you have to want them for a reason. You have to be willing to buy something saying, you know, this will work for my deck. This is an idea I want to try. But the Seeds of Innocence dropping as low as it has again, coming off that $25 card and being back down to six, seven bucks, that is a very good thing for people who want to build that commander with the eater of all. I mean, there's a little bit going on, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Ramble and the Jamble.